Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and as we close in on Tax Day 2022, the rumor mill is churning, let me tell you. But some things that we do know, Massachusetts is getting ready to stock a whole bunch of broodstock browns on the Cape. Holdover striper action in Rhode Island is finally catching up to Connecticut. And the shad run is just beginning. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So before we begin, I just want to remind everybody that the giveaway for the Floyd Roman Nike plug here is still ongoing. Um, and in fact, today will be your last day to catch a fish for it. I'll give you a little grace period till Saturday to get your entries in. I'll pick a winner and we'll announce it next week. If you can't catch a worthy fish between now and then, you can start fishing for the next giveaway. I haven't decided what I'm going to give away yet, but it's going to be on par with something like this. Um, so, you know... You can get an early entry in if you want to put the time in. Uh, something else that's important uh, to mention is that the Fisherman Magazine will be at the Saltwater Edges Striper Season Kickoff, which is on Saturday this week. Starts at 9 a.m. and there's going to be a lot of uh, you know a lot of you know famous plug builders there. There's going to be guys like Chris Voorhees. Uh, his plugs will be there. Stuff from NorCal Cat will be there. Uh, Gary Soldati of Big Water Lures will be there. Hey, even I'll be there. I don't know if I qualify as a famous plug builder, but I will be there. Um, Wayne from Guppy, Glenn from uh, Goo Goo Man, Jamie from Gremlin, a few other ones that, I'm, that are escaping my mind right now. Yeah, a whole bunch of food trucks. It's going to be a great time. Uh, it's, again, it's going to start at 9 a.m. and go pretty much until it ends. Um, but if, you're, if you want to get your hands on some of these custom wood plugs, I would plan on getting there several hours early. I'm expecting to get there and see quite the line uh, forming in the lot. So that's something you may want to check out again. That is at the Saltwater Edge in Middletown, Rhode Island, and that's starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday of this week. And you can renew your Fisherman Magazine subscription there. Another thing worth mentioning is that Connecticut is closing in on finalizing the regulations for sea bass and scup and fluke, and I think maybe even tog. I'm not sure if there's going to be a change in tog. Uh, but I have a call scheduled with one of the guys from Deep tomorrow, and uh, in next week's video, I will give you the full rundown of what's going on there. So let's start things off in Massachusetts, as we always do. And, you know, one of the main focuses right now is Wachusett Reservoir, and with good reason, the place is putting out a lot of nice fish. I've seen lots of shots now of, of smallies up to about four and a half pounds, and I've seen good numbers of uh, lake trout in the like four to over six pound range. Um, it's not a hard place to fish. It is a little intimidating because it's big, but if you go on the DFW website, you can download a map there that gives you all of the contours. You can see all the places where you can get the closest possible to the deepest water. And that's where you're going to have the best shot at getting the lake trout. So you can fish bait on the bottom, or you can do what I used to do and just fish things like cast masters, like an ounce cast master. Just get it out there as far as you possibly can, and then let it sink all the way to the bottom and just snap jig it. You're just going to pick it up and then just let it flutter back down. Pick it up and let it flutter back down. I find that to be a lot more fun than fishing bait on the bottom, just watching for your rod tip to jiggle. It's much more active, it's much more engaging, and you actually get to feel that hit. And, I mean, really, that's that's... That's probably one of the most fun parts of fishing. Um, if you want to target the smallmouth, you're going to probably want to head up mostly into some of the coves. You're going to fish a little bit shallower water. You're still going to be looking for drop-offs, uh, but you're not going to be trying to get into the deepest water possible. Probably going to be fishing waters between like 10 and 25 feet deep. And um, the only thing you have to remember is the lead band. So you can't, if you're going to be fishing like a jig or a net rig, you've got to make sure you're using tungsten or some other non-lead substance. Um, Roy was out of state this week and has uh, has no local reports to share, so we're not going to hear from him this week. Hopefully we'll hear from him again next week. But as we move down to the Cape, um, trout fishing has remained awesome. And as I said in the intro, the state is doing what they usually do around this time of the year, and they're going to start dumping in some of these giant brown trout. And they're you know pretty much from 5 pounds on up to who knows how big. And, you know, just like all stock trout, the best time to catch them, 
is right after they get put in. So if you can get some good info or if you happen to drive up on the stocking truck or, you know, if the rumor mill gets you a, uh, gets you an early, uh, early indication of where they might be, head over there. Um, and just like other stock trout, they are very reactive when they're put in. So um, you can you can get them up. You can do very well on lures, is what I'm trying to say. And you're going to want to use lures that uh, garner a reaction strike. So uh, my favorite things to throw are jerk baits, and but you can also get them on like things like crocodiles and stuff like that. Anything flashy or brightly colored. So the jerk baits you're going to throw, you're going to want to throw solid white. You're going to want to throw solid chartreuse, fire tiger, orange. Um, anything like that's really flashy, like a chrome color or something like that. Anything that's going to catch their eye because they have no natural instincts. They're not looking for a yellow perch. They're just going to react to that movement and, and make a strike. And um, so fish deliberately. Fish with a lot of action in your retrieve. And uh, you have a very good shot at getting one of these, you know, you know they could be the biggest trout of your life. Um, my opinion, you should put them back. I mean, it's not it's very unlikely to be a memorable meal. Put them back in for someone else to catch. You never know. You might catch that thing in three years, and it, who knows? It could be a state record or something like that. But um, it's a very exciting fishery, and it's starting. To, it, that whole thing is starting right now, so get out there and give it a look. Smallmouth bass fishing continues to produce good catches in uh, some of the Cape Ponds, like Mashpee, Wakeby, and some other ones. Uh, same with largemouth, you know, now we got the herring returning, we've got a lot of places that are stocked with trout, with perch spawning going on, so these bass are keyed up and they are vulnerable to being targeted with big baits, so uh, don't, uh, don't neglect that. On the saltwater side of things, there's no fresh striper reports yet. Um, I haven't heard of any tog reports yet, but if you're looking to be the first guy to get one, I would concentrate on the eastern end of Buzzards Bay, you know, maybe up from like Woods Hole down to the west end of the canal. In fact, the west end of the canal seems to be the epicenter for that first tog bite of the year. Uh, other saltwater news, we are hearing about some haddock and some cod out east of Boston. Uh, it's been pretty rough out there this week, so not a ton of reports, but you know, what I've heard, is, you know, people have been catching some fish. No flounder reports yet, but I expect that to change any day. Over in Rhode Island, yeah, Rhode Island has been the source of some of these rumors that I was talking about in the intro. And uh, so the first rumor I heard was that there were some bass, some like 15 to 20 pound bass out in the middle of Narragansett Bay. And some versions of this rumor had them pushing bunker. You know, other versions, they were just kind of rafting around on top. My gut tells me that somebody probably caught a couple of bass in the bay, and as that rumor, you know, stretched and morphed through the, uh, you know, through the six degrees of separation, um, it got inflated or augmented, and it turned from that into this wild rumor of 15 to 20 pound bass push a bunker. I can't corroborate any of that. That's just my guess, although I have talked to numerous people who do more fishing in the bay than I do. All of them have heard the rumor. None of them have seen evidence to prove that it's true. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, another rumor that I heard that actually turned out to be true was that um, Dustin from uh, Rhode Island Kayak Adventures or Rhode Island Kayak Fishing Adventures was out fishing around Jamestown for blackfish and landed on a pile of bluefish. Now this was on April 3rd, and I figured this is an April Fool's joke, but um, you know, we put a call into Dustin, talked to him about it, and it was legit. Uh, school of bluefish rolled up on some unknown type of bait, and, um, and they got a bunch of them. I think he said he had 11, 9 or 11 bluefish that day. They were on the smaller side, but not cocktails, you know, from like 2 pounds up to 6 pounds or 7 pounds or something like that. But that is far and away the earliest I've ever heard of bluefish in Rhode Island. Um, another interesting thing that happened in Rhode Island happened to my friend Michael Schleicher. He was walking on First Beach in Newport and um, he saw something out in the surf. He kind of made his way out there into the waves, probably kicked his shoes off, and it turned out to be a football-sized bluefin tuna that beached itself. No idea where it came from. I got a short video here. It's not the best, but um, at least it shows you that, you know, what it was and that it was legit. Um, so after watching the thing flop around for a minute or two, he, you know, he grabbed the thing by the tail and brought it out into the waves in his pants in the 40 degree surf and did his best to revive it. He said it swam off, but no idea, obviously, uh, what happened after that. 
interesting. No idea why those, why that fish might have been there. Might have just been totally confused. Who knows? Maybe it chased those bluefish in, um, or maybe it was pushing squid. Nobody, nobody knows. But um, definitely something interesting. I thought you guys would find uh, find interesting. And um, now on to the things that I do know. Holdover striper fishing in Rhode Island has been slow pretty much all winter, but it seems to be enjoying a, something of a crescendo here toward the end. Um, hearing about good catches from several different estuaries, um, you know, the salt ponds along the South Shore and many of these tributaries that dump into Narragansett Bay, they're starting to see upticks in activity, starting to see some bigger fish, uh, you know, fish into the upper 30 inch range. You could probably blame this on the fact that the herring are starting to move in and it's just making these fish more active. But if you've kind of thrown in the towel and disgust because it's, it just hasn't been the greatest winter, uh, you may want to put that, fold that towel back up and stick it on the shelf because uh, uh, these next two weeks might be your best shot at salvaging the off season. So let's go check that out. Uh, last Saturday was opening day in Rhode Island and to no one's surprise, most of the guys that went did well. Uh, trout fishing was great across the state in any of the stocked waters. Uh, good sizes and variety of fish. And um, I didn't talk to anybody who went home disappointed. And that's the way it should be. But if you're, you know, if you're, if you didn't get out on opening day, don't write off the trout. I mean, these next couple weeks, even the next month, uh, represent great times to go with great opportunity. And, uh, and you get to do it without the opening day crowd. So uh, don't neglect that. And then um, my buddy Robbie was out this week fishing for largemouth, and he landed on the mother load. Uh, he had 11 fish between 4 and almost 7 pounds, all of them on big baits, on Huddleston's and bull shads. And, um, you know, he was taking advantage of something that I don't hear a lot of people talk about, and that is the perch spawn. So the yellow perch, right around this time of year, they begin their spawn. And they're going to go into the reeds, and they're going to attach their eggs to the reeds, and then the males are going to come in and fertilize the eggs. And it's, it's this wild National Geographic thing. I'll try to get some video of that this week, and I'll put it up in next week's video. But it is, it's quite the spectacle, but it also opens these fish up to predation. You're getting all the yellow perch, you know, these big schools of yellow perch all converging on one area, and, uh, and they're you know, highly concentrated on getting the deed done. Um, and the bass take advantage, and that's what Robbie found, and uh, it really paid off, and it can really pay off, pay off for you. Um, so that's going to last for, you know, I don't know, the next couple weeks that, that'll be taking place. Uh, you know, depending on the depth and size of the pond you're fishing, could happen earlier or later, um, but it's definitely something you want to keep an eye on, and uh, it's definitely something that can be exploited if you're a big bass fisherman. And that's the story that I have for you guys. Actually, one more thing. Um... Tog fishing is open in Rhode Island. I haven't heard of anyone catching a keeper yet. There's been some fish caught south of Block, and there's been some real small ones caught inshore. Um, if history is any kind of an indicator, and it usually is, uh, the tog fishing won't really fire up until the last week of April. Um, so keep your eye open for that. But if you want to be that guy that gets the first keeper, uh, I would start soon because we've got a nice stretch of pretty steady, warmer weather. And that could be the thing that, that pops it off. No fresh stripers yet in Rhode Island, but that is probably going to happen, I would say, almost definitely before I uh, record my next report. And that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. In Connecticut, the Connecticut River is blown out. Crazy flooding in there. Um, still some guys catching fish, but I didn't hear about any pike this week. Um, sure, some of the striper fishing has suffered. And, you know, up in the way back to the tributaries and stuff there's still some pan fishing going on um and also i know like uh one of our authors rowan little is getting some carp in there but he's getting them up in the trees because the uh the water's risen enough that the you know the woods are kind of flooded out so that's one thing that you can um that you can keep an eye on uh in the connecticut river trout fishing in connecticut has been awesome uh and it has been now for a month solid uh I haven't heard a single person complain. I've talked to quite a few guys that have fished in Connecticut. Um, various ponds, various rivers, any stocked body of water seems to be producing fish. And uh, guys are getting them on artificials, bait, and flies. It's just the state, that state does a wonderful job. And uh, they've proven that again this year. On the saltwater end of things, guys are togging. The only togs that I've, the only tog I've heard about have been out in the eastern end of the sound. 
not a uh, hasn't been great by any stretch of the imagination. I haven't heard of a keeper yet. Guys are getting some smaller fish, but that's going to, you know, again, if history is any kind of an indicator, that will fire up right in the last week of the month, and it'll get really good like two days before they close the season. Um, and then the other saltwater news is just the holdover striper fishing up in, up in the rivers. It's been very good. I've been hearing about them from the Thames. I had been hearing about them from the Connecticut River from guys like Mike Roy. Um, I suspect that with their flooding going on right now that that fishery is probably... Not at its best, um, but then again, of course, the crown jewel of, uh, of Connecticut, the Housatonic River, has been producing like crazy. There's a lot of herring in there. The fish are very active. Um, guys are getting them on bigger and bigger baits, and I have actually heard about some topwater fish uh, taken this week. So that's, uh, you know, if you don't mind burning the gas, that's where I would go if I wanted to catch a striper. Uh, Max is away this week, so we don't have a video from him, so uh, we'll have to check up and uh, catch up with him next week. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. I hope you found them helpful. If you're not a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine, I highly recommend heading over to the website and checking out the free content on there to give you a good taste of what we do. If you're still not convinced, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Send me those pictures, and I'll see you guys next week.